Welcome to Captain Dave Sport Fishing. I just posted on my YouTube channel the first run and gun trip behind the shrimp boats for 2020. Shrimping season sort of opens closer to shore on the Atlantic coast of Florida starting on June 1st. So yesterday, I believe, was the 6th. I had a half-day charter, and we decided to go out and do some running and gunning behind the shrimp boats for black tip sharks. Very successful. But then again, I had two young guys who kind of got the sea flu once we left the sharks and went to the inlet to do a little chunk bait fishing for some big redfish. So that proved unsuccessful and the half day charter was sort of cut down to about three hours. But we were successful. Okay, just keep tight on them. Fish sliding position. That pretty much schooled these boys from Southern Illinois. One dad did very well, and he did 45 minutes on one black tip that just would not give up. The link to that video will be below in the video description of this how-to make shark leader video. This is how I do it. This is what has always worked for me, and I have done massive trial and error over the years of what works best for me. I've used everything from 200 pound mono to 400 pound mono to single strand wire. You name it, I've used it. And I have come to the conclusion that this is best for me. It all starts out with this Surf Lawn 1x7 nylon coated stainless steel leader wire. This is 90 pound, comes in the camo color, and you get 30 feet on these little rolls. What I'm gonna try to do is get me some bigger rolls of this, but this is what I can pick up locally. Made in the USA by American Fishing Wire. So, to start off, I usually will do my leaders somewhere in at least the two foot range. I pull off about two feet of this, and the reason being is if I have to cut it, I can put another hook on. These are the tools that you're going to need. You're going to need a set of crimpers. All right. You want at least a crimper that does 0.5 to 1.0 millimeter crimps. You may want to have some HD side cutters. These are just plain old DeWalt's from Home Depot, and they've lasted over the years if you kind of keep them a little oiled. At the same time, these are Calcutta crimpers. You can many pick these up in bargain bins and stuff like that because, you know, not everybody needs them. So I got these. I believe at the West Marine bargain bin for about 20 bucks and they can usually range up to about $32. Get yourself a decent pair. Super cheap junky ones don't last. Actually these aren't the greatest in the world but for $20 they seem to be doing the job. These have wire cutters built into them right there. Excuse my big cut finger here but they got on each side. And you can take this and you can put it in the side and cut. 
right, then you put the little holder back on and move this on out of the way because now that is over. So here is my length of 90 pound American Fishing Wire Surf Lawn. The first thing you want to also do is pick yourself up double sleeves. I got 1.3 100 pack. You can get these at most quality bait shops or you can get them in smaller packs, believe it or not, at Wally's World. I, I usually stop by the fishing section at Wally's World and pick up anywhere from 1.0s to 1.1s to 1.3s and have a lot of these on hand because I use them for other things besides this even. Okay, double sleeve, that's the ticket. Here's a double sleeve crimp, meaning it looks like a double barrel shotgun. All right. You want a sleeve that's double. This fits on here. It's not super tight, and I don't want it to be. Because you'll see in a minute, I have a built-in safety mechanism, I guess you could say, or insurance policy. So the 1.3s slide around on here pretty good on the 90-pound surf lawn. 90 pound. So the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to take, this is just a Mustad 10 aught hook. I also have, because years ago, I got these VMC super hooks. I mean, welded eye. I don't use some ungodly hook. I don't like using giant circles because many times, as you saw possibly in the video that I just posted, that is going to be the sister video to this one, I try my best to always use a de-hooker. and try my best to get the sharks unhooked at the side of the boat if I can. That's not always possible. And then I crimp the barbs. I always crimp the barbs. They're not coming off that easy. So this is my Super HD hook. But for your average shark behind the shrimp boat, this is all you need. That is a 10 knot Mustad 3407 in Durasteel finish, I believe is what they call it. Also, I crimp the hook, the barb down. And that's as easy as just sticking it in your crimper and squishing it down. I do that with all my hooks before they go in my rigging box. Let's put one together. First thing I do, of course, as I go around, I've got my double barrel swivel on here. All right, I'm gonna keep that sort of handy on this end. And I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna go through. I was taught to do this from my old sea daddy. A sea daddy, as defined in fisherman terms, for me, is a guy that done forgot more than what most people will ever know. And my old sea daddy, Captain Randall, rest, rest his soul, taught me this, no matter if you're using single strand, mono, it doesn't matter. Un uncoated cable this is the ticket and I now after years of experimentation with this know why and I'll tell you in a moment all right we have our crimp on there already 
the barb is crimped down and I am going to loop it get it through there twice and then make it go through the loop several times this is very fidgety to try to hold all this all right, get it through there doubling it could probably go one more time all right pull that down a little bit squeeze the two ends together get your sleeve down here towards the business end put your double barrel sleeve on the second portion bring it on down don't go too far leave a little bit of wiggle room there now you've got this loop and you've I separate this and you always crimp top to bottom you don't crimp sideways you don't put your crimpers on like this if you can see that you don't put your crimpers that way you put your crimper straight up and down and you'll see how this comes out nice nicely finished I don't want to have anything sharp. And there's a finished crimp. All right, so then I did this one a little short, but that's okay. Go in here, I'm gonna nip that off as close as I can. Now, here is what old Cat Randall definitely taught me anything mono single strand when you're putting on some serious serious pressure on this leader what this is going to do it's going to draw down it's going to draw down see that it's actually drawing down now see how the space right here is getting further apart that is going to draw down with the pressure of the shark it's no big deal these are almost one-time good deal usages, all right? You can get many times, if you get your hook back, it might work one more time, but you're not using these leaders over and over again. I've actually had one of these up in here break, all right? And that being that it's turned around that loop, literally brought a fish or a shark to the boat because this cinched down on the hook eye so tight that that was our insurance policy. We got the fish, the shark, the whatever to the boat. Okay, because that will pull down most likely. But that's okay. Don't worry about it. So that is how we do the hook end. Then, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get out about a 90 to 100 pound, just plain swivel. Put on our double barrels. Our, our double sleeve. And we're going to do the same thing on this end with the swivel. Draw her down, put her through. All right, put her through. There you go, it jumped on there. Go through again. This works for me. through one more time like I said it's very fiddly it's 
especially when you got a hurt finger like I do from cutting myself. And there you go. You can draw it down a little bit if you want. It's not going to hurt anything. Put our crimp back on here. Push it through. And again, crimp it. I hold the two apart with my finger. Go on in and crimp it from top to bottom. Just like that. If you got space and you didn't hit the whole thing, which many times you're not going to, crimp it right next to each other. And there you go again. If that draws down, something breaks, this is going to cinch down onto the swivel so tightly, it's almost unbelievable. Go in and cut this as close as possible. And there you go. You make up a whole bunch of these. I make up as many as I have storage for. I happen to have um, one of these little sleeves. It's got one two, three, four, five, six, and that's usually enough to get me through a half day morning of running and gunning behind the local shrimp boats. I'll turn this around like that, fold it up really nicely, keeping it dry, keep everything organized, always base everything as if you're out there bouncing around in the seas. It wasn't even that bad yesterday. Little bit of a groundswell, and I already had two seasick teenagers. Or young guys. I guess they were, they were probably still in their teens. Uh, so you don't want to be making this stuff while you're out there. Be prepared and pre-make up, I'm going to pre-make up six of them. And that ought to get me through a morning, half day of running and gunning behind the shrimp boats. They always say success is when preparation meets opportunity. So be prepared. All right. And this is a nice little sleeve. And I usually just roll this up, put it in my box. I got snap swivels and regular swivels, got my two different types of hooks, and then I have all my sleeves right there. Then I carry another waterproof box over here. These really seem to work out. And these boxes is where I keep my tools. And the nice thing about these boxes, these were Home Depot boxes, right? And I can take this, put all this back in here, right? See? And see, another thing I do, cut the labels off of your packaging so you can always remember and keep them in there with your sleeves. So then I can take this, closes, all right, closes up. Everybody has their own little way of keeping tackle dry and organized on your boat, and this is how I do it. These little D DeWalt boxes are skinny, lightweight, and have a rubber rubber gasket in them. So then I'll close this one up. And I'll usually put this one on the bottom. The 
a lock in and these bottoms lock into the tops. All right. So now that whole set is everything I need for running and gunning behind the shrimp boats. All right. This is my shark rigs. I'm using the Ugly Stick Tiger E-Lite jigging rods. They're short, they're powerful. They're six foot three, medium heavy, 50 to 100 pound braided line, four to seven ounces. I also use these same rods in the summertime at the inlet for bull reds and hooking up sharks there too. Because in the summer, you never know. 6'3", medium heavy, braided line, 50 to 100 pounds. All right, then on the business end down here, I've had extremely good luck and really like these. I am using the Thin Ore Sportsman ST30s. They're kind of like a four-aught reel, but not really, I'd say a three-and-a-half-aught reel. Just plain old star drag, graphite on the side. I spool up with a line that I can see good off in a distance. So I use the fluorescent yellow line. These reels seem to work just fine. They're not that expensive, and they hold up. They don't get green. They don't, you know, like an old Penn Senator. I like the fact all the screws are all like hex head. They're not like a straight slot that just strip out when you take them apart. I've used these for a season or two and never even taken them apart to clean them. They just seem to work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.